Right, we got head coach Buzz Williams. Let's start out with some questions. Maybe Christy, do you have questions first? Since you're probably on deadline, actually. Um, how did you think about how your team came out season opener, especially with you having two tough road games heading coming? I can't even talk. Coming up. Yeah, we have a lot. Uh, on the way, I think we play seven times in the next 22 days with five of those games on the road. So um, a busy month against great competition. I think we learned a lot uh, in our two scrimmages and exhibitions. Uh, our staff identified what we need to work on. Our players were very receptive to those lessons. And I think a lot of it uh, translated to tonight. And uh, so, yeah, I thought it was the right and first best step. And I think a lot of it comes from what, what we learned the last two weeks. I know you return a lot of guys from last year, but when you kind of look at the sum of all the parts, does it feel like they fit together in different ways this year? And yeah. Especially like someone like Hayden? Yeah, uh, H has had great growth. Um, He's done a really good job of hanging in there through his first three years. He's always in the right place. He's guarded as an elite level shooter. That makes the game easier for our other guards. Uh, he's made great strides um, in what we want him to do on the glass. Not necessarily his numbers, but uh, our words, rebounding effort. He was really, really good against Texas Tech. And so I, I thought he played outstanding. And I, I don't know, Travis, how to conclusively answer that question on the new guys, but I, I, I think we're going to need each of those new guys to have a distinct role, and we kind of have an idea. It's just probably still a little too early to say. That was Jace's second time with us. He missed the Baylor scrimmage. His brother got married. Um, Wildens has continued to make strides because he wasn't here this summer. So he missed a lot. So he's playing from behind on reps, but he's playing from behind on terminology and knowledge. And then BIP wasn't able to do anything this summer. And so as much as it is game one, how can we continue to – figure out their role while at the same time it not taking away from what's on its way the rest of the month. What did you like about uh, how you guys rebounded tonight and kind of crashed the boards? Well, we were really good, as you know, on the offensive glass last year. I think we finished fourth in the country, and it skews our offensive numbers uh, in a positive way. Um, I think tonight we – Offensive rebounded 47% of our misses. That's a great number. Where we struggled last year, even though it doesn't make sense, we were one of the best in the country at offensive rebounding and then one of the worst in the country at defensive rebounding. And so we've tried to be more proactive in how we teach it and how we coach it and how we emphasize it. And the clips that we watch uh, – all, all layers of it, to be honest with you. Um, last year, they were 18th in the country in threes per field goals. So 46% of their shots were from three. They shoot a lot of threes. Our defense forces you to shoot a lot of threes, which means there's a lot of long rebounds. I thought we did a lot better job tonight. Of their seven offensive rebounds, four of them were a bobbled, unclean team rebound. So 81% of their misses, we defensive rebounded, so that's encouraging. And we need that level. I think we finished 271st last year in defensive rebounding, and that's uh, that's a good way to get beat. What did you think about, um, of course, Taylor is supposed to be one of your leaders, but what did you think about just his first game and the leadership that he continues to show for you? He, he's a, it's a, it's a unique story. Um, in many respects, and I probably don't spend enough time talking about it publicly. Uh, I think he's a good player. Um, but I think what makes him a good player is how he was raised. 
Uh, he likes to work. He wants to work. Uh, he's a much more intelligent person that matches his IQ as a player. I know there's some HIPAA rule probably. He has a 3.85 GPA going into his fifth semester. He's going to graduate from Texas A&M in three years. That's pretty hard to do. Um, he's really, really smart, and he likes to work. And so uh, is he worthy of all the accolades? Uh, I don't know because it's all preseason. But I think the spirit in which he works is why he's easy to cheer for. He's one of my favorite people ever. I talk to him a lot, and very rarely is it about ball. He just has a, a uniqueness to his spirit that's very magnetic. And, uh, and I think his teammates feel the same way about him. Buzz, could you speak to the camaraderie of the, the coaching profession? I know Coach over there has a, is having a tough time now and kind of what y'all – said to support and what the coaching community and just the basketball community has kind of done for that situation. Yeah, so I just got through crying on the radio and uh, Brad's telling me what to say and I never listen uh, on the way in here. And so because I never say anything and I just uh, take questions. So um, About three weeks ago, I started doing a deep dive um, study on commerce. And um, my, my parents graduated from commerce when it was called East Texas State. Uh, when I was a Division II assistant, we were in the same conference. That's the conference that Corey played in her senior year in college. And, like, I don't know anybody. I don't know the coach. I don't know any of the players. Um, I knew they were in the Southland Conference last year because that was the conference I started my career in. And so, you know, I, I'm not very sound with technology, so most of the support staff has given me information. And so I just start Googling, and I Google Coach's name. I met him for the first time last night when they came for practice. And a month ago, his wife had a stroke. They have a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a nine-month-old. She had a stroke while he was at work. And uh, all of this is available uh, for anybody else that wants to Google Coach's name. And uh, so I sent the article to Corey. I don't know what GoFundMe means, and I'm a little paranoid about my name being on the Internet. So... She's been in the hospital every day since the stroke. Uh, obviously, he's young. And uh, today's the first day that he hasn't seen his wife. And uh, they play at Texas Tech on Wednesday, and they play at Kentucky on Friday. And above all else, I hope that I do a good job loving our players and loving our staff. But when my career is over, I hope that I'm known as a coach's coach. And... This is my 1,678th day here, and I've never asked you guys to do anything for me. And I would like you to write on the Internet or in the newspaper something that says Texas A&M played good, they won, but can you put a sentence or two on how we can help him? Um, how can we help his family? I was able to talk to him a little bit about it tonight on – now what happens? And so uh, she's still in the hospital. Uh, I think she is allowed to be in the hospital for 25 more days. And then based on what insurance and all of those things will allow, on day 26, she's got to go somewhere else. And so just like I said on the radio, um, he just joined them for practice about a week ago because he was living at the hospital with his wife. Uh, if something happened to my wife, um, I'm not coaching because uh, I, I couldn't function if she wasn't able to do everything that she does so that I can't coach. And so I know it's a giving time of the year, and I would just ask people, if you can, um, whether it's your tithe or whether you have extra, I think anything would be helpful to that family. Anything else?
It was the uh, second largest crowd, home opening crowd in Texas A&M history. And uh, J-Mo told me last week that it's the highest number of season tickets ever purchased. We're appreciative of that. I think I may have mentioned that the last time I saw you guys. But to have that type of crowd for game number one, we sincerely appreciate it. All right. We're out. Thanks, everybody.